Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 145. I am your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week is the lovely and beautiful Chris from Save Data. Hi, it's me. I'm lovely and beautiful. I'm America's sweetheart. <laughs> Speaking of America's sweetheart, America's sweet tart, it's America's Ian Gibson. Sweetheart. <laughs> Hi, I'm back. I promise not to do the joke where I pretend we didn't have an episode while I was out last week. We didn't have an episode last week. <laughs> you know, that's... <laughs> then what did I listen to? <laughs> uh, I don't know. You, have another, man. you have another trash can? <laughs> what did I feel obligated to listen to before coming on this week? <laughs> uh, You're coming this, this week? week for you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <We're the worst. laughs> we're here to tango and oh, tangle boy. folks we have i honestly this is the, probably the most we've ever stuck in our chit chat section our chit chat section is because i'm here and we're, at the I mean, we don't talk about video games we just do bullshit <laughs> for an hour <laughs> we're literally not allowed to talk about video games when chris is here okay i have this hypothetical that i came up with uh, it's not okay. a would you rather, a la Chris, uh, but it. <laughs> there was one, and it was the fuck ghost. I, I think I, there was actually two. If I remember no, correctly. no, you started being a shit heap about the second one. The second Anyways, one, what was a what? Go ahead. Anyways, I call this the billionaire's box. It's actually, it's more like trillionaire's box. But... I thought you were gonna say that like Zuckerberg and Musk are confirmed to fight or something. No, I'll this was just. Button. I was thinking of a hypothetical situation, and I was like. Okay, I think what got me on this track was the Activision Blizzard sale was what, $70 billion? I thought it was like 62, 65. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like that. Keep going. And that is a that is a seventy billion dollars is an obscene amount of money to anyone. It's also an obscene amount of money to most companies. Like okay. seventy billion dollars. So my basic thing was could a billionaire or trillionaire just like get on the airwaves and be like I have a box that has a hundred billion dollars in it. If you find it, it's yours. Yeah. Like all bets are off. Go I mean, assuming it. it's it's in liquid cash and it's their yeah, cash. That, that's like, what I was gonna say. But what do you think would like I was I was taking this down a road where I was like, people would form companies to like to find, find the hundred billion dollars. Yeah. 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 This is um this is just Ready Player One. So can we just <laughs> skip this? Oh, I didn't. I I I got to that one page that's like eighty percent references and like no actual content. And oh, went, the, nope. the first page. <laughs> the first page. Um, <laughs> that was what I thought of yes. after this. But I was thinking in Ready Player One that I mean that could like that. But someone could do this today. Just be like, like Jeff Bezos could be like, here's a hundred billion dollars. Go uh, find. Are it. you okay? I I don't mean to be mean, but. Oh, why the starting. fuck do you think Mr. Why the fuck do you think Mr. Beast is so popular? Because that's all he does is he's just like, what if I jerk off a million dollars at people and make them do stupid stuff? And then people are like, click, click, click. I'd love to watch exploitation on YouTube. No, that's OK. But I'm thinking what, like the value at the point where like regular people are like, oh, we got to go after this. Like at what that's point what do you want the cannonball run situation? Yeah. Where like every, people from around the country are like, yeehaw, we'll get that money. Like, people quit their jobs, and there's just... The purge is happening at the same time. Like, people are just going wild. But, okay, this is going to sound like a joke, but it's not. But it's like, <laughs> what the fuck do you think January 6th was? It was a bunch of people, like, putting their lives on the line to be like, I am buying into this bullshit yeah. that a supposed rich person is selling to me. Yeah, but but I think the, the key thing with Will's scenario is that there is a box that has this money, and it yeah, is yeah, getting yeah. It. Yeah, unlike how the election was rigged. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a box of fake votes that they yeah. had to get yeah. from Georgia. They, they were in Nevada. I mean, Georgia. Uh, I mean, uh, he only lost one state, right? It wasn't like six, right? Uh, yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. But I, I guess where I'm coming at is like, that's basically how society operates now. It's just there are levels of <laughs> there are levels of veils and curtains uh and like intentional confusion around the box and the people 
but that's basically all they're doing is it's just like, hey, what if life could be better for you if you just are acted irrationally for a bit and have these crazy opinions and did all these crazy fucking things? I have no comment just... about billionaires spending absurd amounts of money on questionable <laughs> things. Or just, oh, my, just, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> just sold your life 40 hours at a time, week by week. You could have money for that. 40? Like... I'd kill for that at this point. Oh, man. Yeah, so, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to take that in a weird way, but we all live in the billionaire's box and nobody will ever find it. Damn. <laughs> that got dark, that got dark. This episode of South I almost said saving throw. Look at that, we get profound. <laughs> this episode brought to you Jesus. by hollow point bullets when you truly want to end it <laughs> Brought all. to you by guillotines. <laughs> I like. I'm sorry. I'm just knowing what a hollow point bullet is. It's like if you're putting the gun against your temple, you don't really need a hollow point. I think any I bullet will get the job done. Well, you're just not in Mel Star Galactic. It's, it's, it's about sending a message Ian. <laughs> to yourself. Yeah. I really want this over with. Oh, I always my thought God. if I were to uh, be, in, I would never. Uh, I would never kill myself. I'm going to say this out the gate. So if anything happens, <laughs> you come, you come after me. But I was thinking if I was forced to just Jesus. do like the most elaborate way ever and like do riddles and stuff, it'd be great. Oh, that way. Well, what's the one from, I think it was nitrogen in project Hail Mary, where apparently if you just like breathe nitrogen, it's just like a blissful well, that, way to But I more go. meant I would just frame someone else for my suicide, hoping that they made that person go to jail. Oh. <laughs> you, Will, you would do very good on my uh, my conceptual game show that's about faking your own death. Oh, do I get a billionaire's oh, yeah. box at the end of it? Yeah, well, the the, the premise is you, you are given $100,000 <laughs> like right now, but you have to successfully uh, convince everyone including like the police and your loved ones you're dead for 30 days and every week that you go the producers of the show will like leave hints and clues that you're still alive <laughs> or wow. what's the or <laughs> what <laughs> oh i thought it was a would you rather <laughs> <laughs> i hate you guys <laughs> Oh my god! Um, I have yeah. I have prepared I have prepared some bullshit no! if we need it. Oh, we'll get to it at the end here. I got Listen, lists upon lists. Number baby. four on this list. Oh, uh, right. Just this trip here. I'm assuming this Ian's referring to uh, because the reason we didn't have an episode last week is Ian wasn't here. Yeah, yeah. So we went on a weekend trip last week, and um, it was kind of video game related, and I'll explain why. Have you guys ever heard of Helen Georgia? Like the uh, Helen, a place in it's, the state of Georgia. Uh, it's a place in the state of Georgia. I ask because I, I've been I've mentioned it a couple times to people I know, and it's surprising the amount of people that have heard of it. But basically, it's a little town uh, like an hour north of Atlanta in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Georgia that has just decided that they're going to be a German town. So all the buildings in the town are German themed. All the restaurants are German themed. And every year they put on a big Oktoberfest for like two months straight. Are you fucking it's, kidding me? I'm no, so annoyed. I used to live so close to this. It's, <laughs> it's kind of wild because it's it's like a it's like it's like the perfect halfway point between Disney World where like you go to a theme park like Disney World, et cetera, and they're like, we're going to make like, you know, France land as part of Epcot or whatever, or even like like the Samuel Adams revolutionary part of uh, the Magic Kingdom. And it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, I guess the buildings look the same, but it's still a theme park. And then there's the real thing in Germany. And this is like a mix between the two, because it's literally all the buildings are German themed. They're like that all year round. They're real buildings. It's not temporary buildings. And it's wild how authentic they are because we were going to these restaurants and they weren't like, oh, get the wiener schnitzel. And then they just bring out, you know, like a hot dog with an Oscar Mayer wiener on it. Right. No, they they had legit fucking German food there. Like one of the restaurants we went into in the lobby area had a small grocery store that was filled with German food, <laughs> like German labeled food that you could buy and stuff. Um, so yeah, it was kind of wild and it reminded me a little bit of video games because, you know, you have like video game spaces that are meant to be representative of real world locations, you know, like remember no Russian, it's supposed to be a Russian airport, stuff like that. That's <laughs> you know? your go-to? Like... <laughs> well, I'm trying to think of other like <laughs> real spaces 
that try to be represented in video <laughs> like, games. There's Assassin's <laughs> Creed games. There's so the many Assassin's games Creed. other there's than like... no Rush in the... <laughs> the... There's, in fact, other Call of Duties you could have gone with. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tom wrong, Clancy though. game. It is a good example, though. Um, is it? <laughs> it is, I don't even think it's because... a real airport. <laughs> what I was gonna say is even a real airport. Well, what I mean is, what I mean is that they try and they try and present like a lived-in space with real people walking around, and you're and kind of like you know Marvel Spider-Man, where you're like, oh, this is supposed to be New York, etc. And this felt like a real world version of that, where over decades this town has just put so much effort into being like a Bavarian Alpine German town. Um, mm. So anyways, it was kind of a weird experience. We got some souvenirs. I got this, I got this sick ass oh, mug. Oh my God. This nice big ceramic mug, uh, which was on sale. So uh, if you ever want to, you know, do Oktoberfest, but don't want to go all the way to Munich, honestly, just go to Helen, Georgia. It was pretty neat. I thought I when you first like said it. Less than three hours from there, and I'm so annoyed I never knew about this. I, yeah, it was a seven hour drive for us, but Honestly, worth it. <laughs> Seven that's hours? That's that's a lot for Oktoberfest. Okay. But... I have a cheat. I have a cheat code, which is I have a new car, and it has fantastic smart cruise control <laughs> and lane keeping. So that, like, seven hours honestly felt like four hours in a you normal car. And the... No, I just have a Hyundai. The no. Kindle fits that's right in the front, wow. too. <laughs> it fits right there. But I also had a, a lot. I have like ninety fucking podcasts to listen to, so I was like, "Give me the drive, give me the podcast." I, I, I like, do love a podcast on a road trip, or just like just like time to work on stuff in my head on a on a yeah. fucking road trip was great. Like we listen the to amount the of D and I get done on a fucking road yeah. trip is incredible. Like the amount of would you rather's I come up with while I'm driving <laughs> is insane. <laughs> There's one on the whole list. You're just a little <laughs> shit. Oh my god! Oh. Now I'm confirming Anyways, that there's only one. Yeah. Anyways, uh, cool, place, cool place. Cool uh, <laughs> place. Weird little. If you ever think about our hobby, like think about how much of our fucking hobby is spent spending time in imaginary places. Like yeah, those, compared those to a lot of hobbies. are a lot cooler than, than where I I live in New Jersey. Like, what do you. <laughs> yeah. You live in Florida. I just mean, we have a, we have yeah. A very, <laughs> we have a very imaginative hobby because, like, if you're into woodworking, you're working on wood, but it doesn't mean that you're constantly like interacting and embracing with like fictional worlds, fictional characters, and like interacting and doing things and choices in there. And you're it's weird to see spruce. that spruce. Yeah, and it's weird to see that that level of imagination of like we're gonna make a whole fucking fake town thing leak into the real world outside of theme parks. I guess theme parks is kind of the generic way that it happens. Yeah. <clears throat> Spr anyway, Spruce Spruce Springsteen is the Bruce Goose wood version of bruce springsteen we'll take the spruce moose hop in um i can't hop that in. was great i'm sorry when you first introduced it i thought you were gonna say helen keller uh and that's what i wanted to say this whole time that's all i could think about was helen keller. I, in the middle of ian speaking i noticed the lady with the fucking like the cutout behind him on the the wall it's nicole nicole <laughs> hurricane nicole hurricane nicole she was she was she was at extra life last year yeah we hit was the she? dono goal you've had it that long Oh, you know what? You guys did Extra Life same weekend, so you may not have noticed this, but Hurricane Nicole hit Wednesday night before right. Extra Life. Right, I do remember this, yes. And we were we were a little <clears throat> paranoid because we weren't sure, depending on how bad it was, if we could get people into town for Extra Life. So as a joke, I made her, and she was on the couch, and we said she was visiting that weekend, yeah. etc. Are you guys this calling, year calling you everyone down again? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, getting there nice and early. Two weeks early, so we can get all the lovemaking out of the way. You're there two weeks early? Is that real? No, not, uh, okay. It's Wednesday. something you would do, though. <laughs> the one day before. Um, anyways, uh, sorry, this next bullet point uh, we can skip. I'll save it for another time. Wait, hold on. Uh, no, you had a whole thing with a cigarette. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. I just. What? No, we just bought fake cigarettes for our, our show, and now we just. They're just constantly here. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, that's illegal on the internet. No, it's not. Hey, kids. It's legal in our state now, motherfucker. Smoking? We're fine. Smoking's cool, kids. Smoking is cool. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I should not have just change. pulled that. <laughs> that was a <laughs> oh, no. mistake. Uh, anyways, um, I, uh, we don't have to get into this now, uh, but I was thinking the other day 
how uh, this is where we just workshop our stand-up bits now yeah pretty hey, much yeah. i was thinking out there um no i was thinking the other day, i was thinking of shit and i was thinking about it i feel like the art of surfing the internet is gone i want to show we just yeah. cruise the internet yeah i was thinking that too i literally had the same idea because i was like you just like do the reels or the TikToks or the Reddits or the, all that sort of stuff. You don't like, I was like, I should just sit down, boot up Wikipedia and just like, let it take me, uh, Jesus take the wheel. Um, yeah. And just go through I think, it. I think to your point though, I, I, I don't disagree with you, but I think when we had multiple viable working social media sites, like yeah. when Twitter was doing fine, when Reddit was doing fine, et cetera, it was easier to forget that we weren't surfing the internet because it would just be like, I'm going to spend some time in this collector and then I'll go to this collector and then I'll go to this collector. And the problem now is all the collectors are fucked. So you're just yeah. like not even satisfied in each collector and there's fewer collectors. And I feel like I'm always learning. I'm always learning news, current events, or I am seeing something funny that I'm laughing at. And I'm not like absorbing knowledge when I'm when I'm on the internet these days. And now, yeah. like, I'm at the point yeah. where if I'm relaxing on the computer, I'm like, oh, let me pull up and like do a step of my Python tutorial, and then like like balance that out with like surfing, like not surfing the web, but with checking well, stuff. Do you guys remember that plugin? where you would click a button and it would just take you to a random website in your list of interests there's Stumble a upon? there's a stumble upon Th yeah. that shit's got to still be around right and if it is so i don't think Stumble upon is, that. but there there is i know there's a website i forget what it's called where you click a button and it just takes you to a random web page that still runs javascript oh boy <laughs> and it just like oh, loads man. it up for it loads it for you in a thing so you're safe from any yeah. like fuckery um and I and like like we can just sit on that for now and just see like what's uh, still up like what's still being supported that's out there. Honestly, I <laughs> thought of this when I was doing research for my Galactic Empires video. Is we should just browse the GeoCities archive for a bit because oh, I was taking screenshots of those for the like little bit uh, in the video where I'm like, look at these GeoCities websites, and I spent like four hours just going on Geo and plus the like worst yeah. like I don't think there's porn on GeoCities. So I don't think we would hit anything. Uh, uh, there, there is. No, there is. I don't think there's any in the archives unless like it's explicitly stated. There is. Uh, there is. I uh, like the problem say, be. For my, I didn't for search the hard Hearts, enough then. <laughs> well, the Kingdom Hearts hard. stream overlay, I wanted to look like GeoCities. So then I came across a GeoCities GIF archive and it was just a shitload uh, of GIF somebody had ripped from GeoCities. And there's definitely some like late 90s animated tits in, i came across archive. like a 90s grunge uh bdsm like leather wearing uh geo cities and the worst thing That's that was disgusting. on there were like thongs but they, these were like people in gas masks Skip and shit and i was like fuck yeah like That's, you get it at this weird uh, club do you guys, do you guys, you guys think you failure you guys think you fail to capture a youthful audience because you reference shit like geo cities <laughs> listen i I'll be completely honest. I didn't know what GeoCities was until Ian told me what GeoCities was. Oh, really? Yeah, he's the old. Well, I knew like those types of websites. I just never mm. knew like GeoCities was the host of it. Right. You know. I think I may be too old for GeoCities though, because we all are. We're all too we, you know, we old. Oh, you're too young. No, because Geo GeoCities kind of hit at a point where it was popular and useful, and I think I got <clears> into. <throat> making stupid little websites before that point so it was like i'd already moved on from that hobby attempt by we the time all, geocities took you're 45 off. right we were all like the myspace era but i guess uh, not right no. oh, i never had buddy a i'm 33 i'm old i'm old and i've been online my dad my dad had aol when i was born same in 90 yeah so i've i've been online since i since like two like and they found a cure for not, not, since not then. bragging that's not a good thing necessarily but because <laughs> the ice folks. bucket challenge <laughs> the ice bucket challenge oh ice bucket challenge god every day of my life am i right <clears throat> um that's about all we got for s what you don't put your balls in ice buckets everyone <laughs> that's not that's not the ice bucket challenge buddy well I need to Something. write. I need to text some parents. Um, 
Just That's use my a condom. surfing the internet <laughs> bit. Uh, uh, Chris, uh, you have come with a bullshit prepared. Oh, I've I, come all right. Um, uh, please uh, bless us with your bullshit. All right, this one's called The Dictator. You have been selected to become the chief advisor to Kim Jong-un on a topic. And for the sake of this thinker, you've accepted this proposal. What concept slash topic would you choose to be the advisor of? Entertainment, cuisine, nuclear warfare, economics, whatever, it doesn't matter. Think on that. Uh, as long as you hold this position, you will be treated very well with North Korea. You will hold this position until you or Kim Jong-un dies. If Kim Jong-un dies first, you will not be able to leave North Korea, but will no longer have to serve as an advisor. You will still live very well in Pyongyang. Uh, as part of this role, you will have to speak with Kim Jong-un at least once per day. The time you spend talking to him is random, but it will always be a minimum of five minutes and a max of five hours. <laughs> you will be treated like an expert in whatever field, regardless of your actual knowledge in that field. And Kim Jong-un will heed your advice and take it into consideration, regardless of how good or bad it is. Unless your advice is perceived as dangerous to his life, his political reign, or outwardly hostile to the people of North Korea, in which case you will be executed. I, I, I don't mean to offend, but I don't think this is a good one because it really just boils <laughs> down to, Would it boils rather? down to, no, it, it boils down to a question that I've, that uh, I can't remember the exact phrasing. I've heard it multiple times, which is basically like, if you had to give a five hour talk, right, a five hour presentation on something right now, what could you do? No, 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 no. See, that, I don't agree yeah, with I, that. I, I think you're That's misinterpreting the question. No, no, because you don't need to be an expert to. in this field. For this. But but it's you need to be willing to talk to him for five minutes to up to five hours per day. So it's basically boils down to what are you comfortable talking on? Yeah, for no, up to five hours up. per day. He's gonna, I'm be comfortable, he's gonna believe you regardless. I'm comfortable talking to Kim Jong Un about wiping every day, but I'm not comfortable giving a for five, five hours, hours talk every day on that. Not five Ex hours exactly. So so I think it. I, I think I think you got a lot of details in there, but it really just boils down to what. Are you comfortable with having up to a five hour conversation on every single day? Because that's what it's going to boil down to. Right. I, I think you're totally yeah. misunderstanding. Because yeah. like because like my thing is like the goal here is to pick a topic uh, or like a, a specialty that you're going to have to talk on that is going to entertain you the most and like keep you willing to keep yes. going with the thing. Yes. Because like so it's what I, topic could you give a five hour presentation on basically but like, like that I, you're so invested in like for you it's RuneScape. like. It's RuneScape. I was gonna say, it's that's professional wrestling. But like, even if it's wrestling, like, I don't. I'm gonna run out of shit to say to the fucking guy. So like, like, give me like nu give me like nuclear warfare or something. That at least I can be like, yeah. I was gonna say fuck, drainage. Let's go. Like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll just fucking. I'll just make shit up for for. Like, it's fine. Like, oh, put a sewer here, my lord. Like, fuck. Actually, man. I I did think I did think like what would be fun also is like music or something like I'd love to like brighten Kim Jong Un's musical horizons like that'd be fun yeah. to me. I think I think to make it to make it more interesting, you've got to add a mechanism in there where you have to you have to satisfy his interests or his needs because at any moment <laughs> he, he kills you. He kills you. Yes, at any moment, yes. conversation's not good. You're out. You're done. Well, so it's like I think, something that you've I think that be works to the to, capricious to do nature well. of Mister Mister Zhang, Mister Kim. I guess mm. uh, his names names are backwards. No, Un's his first name. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Because uh, like I don't know, he's a dictator, and what I know about dictators is that they kill motherfuckers frequently. <laughs> yeah. When you yeah, first yeah. So said this question, part of I thought you were saying a dictator. Like a dick-shaped potato. And I was like, where is this going? <laughs> or eat a dick-shaped potato. If you, Will, Will Eddie, if you were a dictator of a country, let's say it's it's North Korea size and North Korea styled, what would be the first yeah, okay. rule you made? <laughs> What's your first, okay, that's like, That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, fuck, I have too many. I've got too many, honestly. Um, I've had one that I thought would be fun for a while, which is a nationally enforced bedtime. Everybody has to go to bed at the same time. <laughs> Everybody has to wake up at the same time. No, none of this, none just, of this, like none okay. of this burning the midnight oil bullshit. Everyone goes to bed at eleven <laughs> p.m. Wakes like, up at seven a.m. That's it. I hear you, but that just sounds like a like a bad town or a bad it city just, where it, everything it simply, closes it at five p.m. Simply wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but I love uh, the guy like a, like a guy whose job is to walk around at night with a machine gun. He's like, yeah. Everybody sleeping? <laughs> I think you have to be have asleep to too, not just in your house. <laughs> you have to be asleep in bed. <laughs> yeah, you have, be, you have to be tucked in with like the little hat on and like the candle yeah. like resting in the nightstand. <laughs> I think there should be a uh, three strike rule for chewing with your mouth open. <laughs> um, there should be man. a two drink minimum for the whole country. <laughs> I'm just thinking of all the ways people piss me off and how I can make that illegal. Um, I, I can't even think of a good one. I kind of want to have like a mandatory minimum IQ. And after that, you're just kind of put <laughs> out to pasture. <laughs> A special farm. Uh, I I think mine would be no no ease. Letter E like is out in word. Oh, okay, yeah. No letter E. There it's was um. I get rid of the letter C first. It's less useful. I yeah. can't say. There's this um. K and S already do that. <laughs> there's this '60s movie called Wild in the Streets, and basically the premise is like the psychedelic '60s kids they are able to lower the voting age down to like 16 and then they become senators because of that and then they they become president oh and then they impose, i've seen that and then they impose a national law that i think if you're like 35 or older you're shipped out to these farms yeah. where you're just given lsd doses every day for the rest of your life wow. i don't remember that part but that plot yeah. sounds very familiar to me yeah it's a wild movie yeah um, this is this is a, a tiny mini thinker it's mostly a one sh shot bit uh, if you had to replace gun violence with something, like the same amount of deaths, like if there's you know five, oh. that, if there's five thousand gun deaths a year, but like, your whole goal is to replace something that's going to be rad, like it's just awesome that this is that this happens. <laughs> like, can, like, like, it's like, like piano, swords, <laughs> like piano <laughs> wire. You just yeah, yeah. Are constantly getting piano wire. <laughs> You're actually not wait, the first person to answer. Wait, like garot. Wait, are the people still dying? It's just yes, a rad yeah. way to same. die. Same exact different way of death. Same same amount yeah. of deaths. Like maybe it's not the same circumstances. Like no, no, you know, no. I a lot think of gun deaths crossfire. It's the same number of suicides, but instead of by gun, it's by piano wire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or if or if or if it's like fucking I don't know, like like what's like it swords, like a, and it's just like it's, everyone's doing seppuku. It's called like a uh, what's the one where you like a Chicago necktie where they just stuff your mouth full of snow. <laughs> Like what are so, those really weird deaths? Columbia necktie. Um, mine would be break lines. instead of uh, dying. However, they were supposed to die. It's spontaneous when some there's a chance when someone does finger guns at someone else, they just explode. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, like I thought you were one in say... five thousand chance. You just have guys on the street going or not. Yeah, <laughs> they're just. I thought you were gonna say spontaneous combustion. That's good. <laughs> how do you, how do you murder via spontaneous combustion though? You, I I don't know, but it's, no. But just it's, think about it. I guess it's it just matter. like I guess it doesn't matter. you're casually just sitting there, like, oh, great point, and you do that, and the person just explodes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. See, I I do like the idea that it's a practical weapon, though, because I would love to walk out in the street and they're like, you know, there's two dudes fighting with katanas, and it's like, in a, if there's a gunfight, I have to run because I get caught in the crossfire. But if there's some katana fighting, if I'm at a safe distance. I can watch as much as I like. Yeah, but the and, thing is, and okay. if I get too, and if I get too close and I get caught in the crossfire, that's yeah. on me. That's on you. <laughs> but I think the the mistake here is the amount of gun deaths that happened today. I have not so personally wit I have not personally witnessed any gun deaths. So I need some way to change it such that I can witness it, in which case I want tactical nukes. I want to know every time somebody is killed near me. I need um, some sort of large flashbang to tell well, me. Well, I died. feel like the other thing is that like gun violence is so quick. Whereas like yeah. other weapons would take longer. You'd have more time to get to the action. Drawn and quartered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can I've see the like, death you know, in their eyes. I've lived in some pretty sketchy parts of this this country. I've seen people shoot guns at other people. I don't think I've ever seen anyone die. Terrible shots. <laughs> yes, the police. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're Storm great at shooting civilians. Says so. Florida man. Oh boy. Anyways, is that how much more? How many more? Time? Yeah, sure. You got any oh, more? I have, I have, I have fuckloads more. You want, you want to round, let's Don't round this out with a happy one that's not about gun death. 
<laughs> Never mind. <laughs> scroll, scroll, I, scroll. I, I do have one. The, the first one, it is also about death, but it's rad. Does that help? Uh, sure, you can do it. All right. You are going to die. This is a, a foreseen conclusion. Uh, you're going to die being killed by a pack of animals. You can choose the kind of animal. You will die no matter what the animal. It's just like it's going to be a larger pack depending on how many necessary to take you down. However, you get to start the, the attack like when the animals come and get you by doing one really sweet move that's going to look awesome. And, 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 it, and there's like it, a it nature an camera that's going to like see you. Mm -hmm. And like somehow that footage will get to people. And the, the seeing the number of animals, the immediate thought will be, that guy's fucking dead. And then when they see you do the one cool thing, everyone's going to go, yo! <laughs> and then you get mauled to death or whatever. And, and, it ha and it has to be an attack. The animals are attacking you. The animals are attacking you. And like they are hostile to you regardless of like even if it's an animal that wouldn't be. Like it could be like a bunch of horses. And it's like, why did horses gang up and kill that guy? D doesn't matter. It happened. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking honestly, like a herd of kittens. Yeah. But that's when good. they first get there, I do like the most sweet ass, like roundhouse sweeping kick and nice. just like Neo style clear a whole bunch of them. And then they, they pile on top. That's my answer. I, uh, I'm going to pick giraffes. Yeah, that's good. And my one rad You're, thing. You got to be careful though, because like giraffes run the risk of like They'll being. Suck you off. Of, no, of, of people seeing it and going, why was this asshole fucking with giraffes? Yeah, that's true. Um, well, my one cool thing was I do the samurai sword thing where I just pull it out and close it really quick, and the 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 giraffe's head just slides off. <laughs> yeah, my God. and then its kin bolt like bulldoze you. Yeah. Um, actually, you know um, what? Can I choose just the African, the like the just the Lion King animals? Mm -hmm. So I do that to the giraffe, and then the all oh, the other hurt. Lion King animals come and kill me. Oh, oh, oh! You want like you want like the savanna coming together yeah. to whoop your ass? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, fine. honestly, if you just reenacted the Lion King scene beat for beat, that that would be your your animal plan. Like Will moment. Will drops a lion and then gets like thrown to the wildebeests. I haven't no. seen it, so you're gonna have to describe it to me. You, you have not Lion seen King? Lion King. I've not seen the Lion King. The fuck, God, you're a fascinating. Person. I don't like singing it's in great. movies. Mine, mine is alligators or crocodiles, whichever one are freshwater. I don't want to get salty. Like um, Temple of Doom. I want to be in like in like ankle high ish water, maybe a little deeper. I don't really give a shit. I want one to like jump at me, and I want to grab it midair and like suplex it down. Hell yeah! <laughs> and then get mauled to death. <laughs> They, um, is it both alligators and crocodiles do the roll thing? Yeah, yeah I think so. They're like, I, I, ideally, I, 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 like, you can also, like, I know, like, alligator wrestling, like, they do the thing where, like, they grab them and then roll with the alligator, which is, like, it's dizzy. Fucked, man. Gators and are then, fucking, we, yeah, don't, we fuck, don't, a, don't fuck with it. Hey, if it's been around since fucking dinosaur time, don't fuck with yeah. it. Yeah. We had we had a ten foot gator that moved into our pond about a year ago, and it was here for, like, a couple weeks, and all the neighbors were just like, watch out watch out and we went out one night and it was at the edge of the pond like 20 feet from our back door just fucking looking at us through the water and i was like fuck no and they finally came and took it i saw a video of a gator like walked up to another gator bit its leg rolled and ripped it off and the other gator's like yeah what the fuck man <laughs> just like walked yeah. away it's terry like, god damn doing? it dude <laughs> the fuck? lizards man <laughs> Um, that Anyways. was some fun, uh, folks. That was Chris Bullshit. Um, those are going up on uh, our YouTube Shorts channel, so make sure to check out Chris Bullshit section. Uh, they'll be there. Uh, don't forget us forget to give us a like, a TikTok, and a reel. Thank you. Do you have a Shorts channel? Uh, we do have a Shorts channel, actually, but oh, that's shit. not yeah. where uh, uh, we use it. things go. Was last to be uploaded to it? Uh, no, months. Jake does the wish wishlist spotlights over there, doesn't he? Maybe. I think so. I think he uploads the shorts on the short channel until YouTube fixes the shorts thing. I don't know. Um, folks, it's time to talk about the video games we have been playing this week. I'm going first because I'm the king of the land. Folks, I have been playing some Spider-Man 2, Marvel's Spider-Man 2. It is a video game in which you play not one, but two Spider-Mans. Uh, you've got Miles Morales and Peter Parker, or Peeny Porno, as we call him in this household. 
Uh, known, Peter Parker. Known, known Cuban, Miles Morales. <laughs> known Cuban or Puerto Rican. Oh, we're not sure yet. Uh, he hasn't, we're, we have another we're very sorry. Party. We patched the flag. We're so sorry. Please stop yelling at us on Twitter. <laughs> They're like so close, man. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, it's fun. It's great. I think it's the best superhero game that has ever come out. I think it has taken... Take Superman sixty four is a fantastic Superman super. Game, I'm trying to think what's game. what's in what's in contention real quick. Super uh, first Spider Man, first Spider Man, uh, Miles uh, Morales, Wolverine yeah. Origins. Okay, the, the genuinely incredible a good Hulk game. movie. Wait, is that is that the one that's like the Hugh Jackman? You like you punch the guy in the helicopter? You put his head in the helicopter fan blaze. Yeah, yeah that game does that game does rule. Yeah. Ooh. Punisher video game. I've heard some crazy things about that. That could possibly uh, be yeah. Yeah, you're like grab. But that's more like weird. Good. You're talking about the PlayStation Two era. One? Yeah, I think it was. And you like that one's hilarious. People. Yes. Uh, yeah. You get these like weird flashbacks where he goes like, "My family, family, family." <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> there um, was that um the 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 Hulk game that came out with the Angly Hulk movie. That was that was pretty good. It was kind of an action brawler. Oh. The Avengers. Yes. Mm-hmm. No, Marvel's <laughs> Avengers. Yeah, it's great. So I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to downgrade what you're saying, but Fortnite. There's not a lot. There's not a lot of great superhero movie superhero games. Oh yeah, so I, it's good I, to see uh, that one Sega that Iron Man one that gave it. people seizures. Great one. Well, great I don't one. think there has to be other good ones to be the best. That's no, no, no I'm not argument. saying that. It's honestly kind of shocking yeah. how few there are. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Uh, Arkham franchise. Oh yeah. Yes. There you Those go. are good. Those are good. Um. Yeah. But yeah, it is fantastic. It is really well made. Um, I, I mean, honestly, it, it feels a bit like um, how Return of the King won all the Oscars for the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. This yes. game, sh- like, even though the other game got a lot of praise, this seems like the perfect game that has taken everything that Spider-Man won d- and Miles Morales did really well and uh, made it into this game. Uh, it... Uh, the 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 thing I had wrong the the thing I didn't like about the other game is it just felt like you were there was like all the other stuff it, it never felt cohesive together like the side activities the cop the like little cop things yeah. that would happen the little like so the missions right, if I if I can cut in here real quick can you give your your Spider Man background because I was thinking you hadn't played either of the previous two I have. I played about probably 20, 25 hours of Spider-Man 1, and then okay. I played maybe an hour and a half of Miles Morales. I didn't play that much you, of it. You did say, yeah. can you give me your Spider-Man background, as if Will has been bitten by a radioactive spider in the past. I wish. Can you? Wish. Could you imagine if, if that did happen to you, but you're just too fucking lazy to be a superhero, yeah. <laughs> so you have all the I thought I thought a lot about <laughs> so this. I, like, I, I, I don't have the time. Like, I, yeah. It's like, would you rather be a superhero or just continue to be what you currently are? Like, I don't. Th- and also, like, I'm not that good of a person. I don't know if I'd help people. I don't know. <laughs> I know. Maybe, maybe one a week. I mean, honestly, maybe. that's yeah. like, sort on, of like the on plot. Like, like on on Wednesdays, I'll go out there and help out. I'll still swing around like a motherfucker, but I'm not gonna stop and help you. Okay. Yeah, I'm but having, I'm doing, I'm doing that my own tips. thing. That's my yeah. favorite part about Peter Parker oh. in these recent games is he's like, I need a job. Like, I need to like pay rent on my apartment. And then, like, yeah. even in this game, it starts off with these, like, oh, f- like, f- I-, I need, like, I got a job, yay, and then other stuff happens, and then it's just like, I need to make money, I can't just rescue people. Um, Start a go is... me, Peter. But anyway, Spider-Man 2, super great, I have done, like, every side activity, they have made uh, things super easy for you, as you're going around the town, you click the right stick, shows all the available things right near you, the cop stuff thing activities you don't have to do or they appear right next to you um there's there's like trunks and caches all over the place and then there's these stupid awesome spider bots that are all over the city at one point but they do this big distortion glow thing away from them at like random intervals Mm -hmm. and it's like a great because you see it out of the corner of your eye and they're like where is that fucker? Oh, yeah. And he spent like 15 minutes trying to find not 15 but five minutes being like it was over here it was over here um that's super fun. The gameplay is great. Uh, they have really pared down. 
I thought the combat was a nightmare in the first one. This game, it is a lot better. It's a little less of a nightmare, but all of your, like, bigger attacks is either the left or right bumper plus the face buttons. So uh, one okay. side of that is um, your gadgets, and the other side of that is your, like, special punchy moves. Uh, and then there's stuff you upgrade throughout the upgrade tree that I barely pay attention to, like... Uh, the more time you keep people in the air, you hold triangle to swing them around and all that sort of blah, blah, blah stuff. Um, outside of that, traversal is a heck of a lot better now. You've got all of Queens and Brooklyn. Uh, you have a wingsuit now. There's air tunnels that like glide you right across the, the rivers on both sides or the rivers on one side. Uh, so you can easily go back and forth. Uh, you don't have to like struggle to swing across the bridges or anything like that fast travel is snappy and immediate um it happens in like less than two seconds it is pretty incredible uh i am playing uh in performance no i'm playing in fidelity mode uh with variable frame frame rate on and 120 hertz refresh rate so it is a solid 40 frames per second uh okay and I, honestly, I think I like that the most. Um, I get all the ray tracing and everything, and it is at 40. Uh, the fidelity is at 30, and then the performance is at 60. But um, they uh, rescale Man Manhattan at all? Because I remember in the first game, people bitched and moaned that, like, you cut off parts of the city. Yeah, it's it's clearly... They make it more clear in this game. It is not. It is New York of this reality. Um, yeah. Mostly because the whole top upper part of Manhattan is just another river with bridges spanning across it. So you're like, yeah, that's how Manhattan go, works, go up right? north. Yonkers. Um, yeah. It's interesting on the like Queens and stuff, You they just like, you hit a wall. It's like, you can't go this way anymore. And it turns you around. I'm, um, I'm fine. They didn't like make it an abyss over there, uh, which is nice because it, it, sometimes that just like breaks well, reality that, when it's like suburbs and then though. ocean. Um, but no, they did a really great job expanding that out. Um, the city is truncated in terms versus real New York City, but uh, it does feel like a hike going from like Lower Manhattan to Upper Manhattan and all that sort of stuff. Um, and like I said, the the fast travel works in like two seconds. You still kind of just want to swing and glide everywhere. It just feels really nice. good. That's good. Um, and then I'll, I'll end this off by saying the uh, the story is genuinely really great. I've I've been taught. I'm not that big into superhero things to begin with. Um, I'm not that into Spider Man, also. But um, they have done, and and you can tell by commercials and stuff that they're rehashing some things we've seen in other Spider Media. But I think they do it in a really neat way in this game, and in a way that isn't like schlocky or stupid. Like it, it, it does it very well. Um, I'm, I'm 63 percent of the way done with the game. There are still things. So when you like hover over each of the zones on the map, it'll like list out all the collectibles in that area. I still have locked collectibles on there. So there's still things I haven't mm -hmm. like Shit. unlocked in areas to find. <sighs> um, mm -hmm. But overall, I'm really liking it. Uh, I think it, it's definitely, uh, I, I would put it on the game of the year list. I think it's a game. I don't think it's my number one or two or three, but I think it's in the top 10 for sure. Uh, it is a very fun game uh, and it, it cool. feels great. So I'm going to put it in there. Oh, I, the other thing I wrote down, which is this baited by collectible. Uh, Craven the Hunter is in this game, and there's hunters, and they have these hunter blinds. And I was swinging around, and I saw a collectible, and I said, fuck yeah. So, And it was ultra rare tech parts. So I landed, started to open wow. it, and then they all ambushed me. <laughs> all the hunters That's ambushed awesome. me. And I beat them all up. Still was a fake tech cash. I still like it's when there wasn't nice. even a reward for it. And I was like, fuck me. So now every time I'll land next to one and like do a double look for like the shimmer of their like hunter's blinds just to make sure they're not uh, going to do it to me again. So, um, yeah. Uh, the other game I played this week uh, is called Cosmonaut. Um, some of my friends from back home uh, were playing some video games and uh, I was like, oh, let's just. My, or my friend messaged me, he's like, I just want to play something. So I went on Itch, and I sorted by multiplayer, and I found this game called Cosmonaut, and you're literally... It, it looks really cool. It's like this vector... Not vector. Pixel uh, poly, polygonal world. 
um, VHS asymmetric. effect and asymmetric. Isometric. Isometric. It's not isometric. It's first person. Is it a rogue? Is it a rogue light or a rogue? No. So basically, you're going to these different space stations. You're looking for notes and in logs inside the space stations, and the whole time there's an alien creature walking around trying to kill you guys. Uh, and we played it for maybe an hour and a half. There's two levels out so far. It is free on itch.io if you'd like to play it. It's called Cosmo, not N A U G H T. Um, it was just super fun for like a free game. Uh, it had pretty rock solid multiplayer. We were playing some of the later level, the second level on Nightmare, which like speeds up the beast, and there's two of them. So you're like panically uh, avoiding them. And the way you avoid them. Is, which is my favorite part is there's just like chairs and boxes in rooms and as long as you're standing on a chair or a box they can't get to you so they just like walk around on the ground and like lose track of you and they leave these like little uh we called them uh what do we call them i don't think we called them cream Blobbies. pies but they were literally like splats of shit on the ground that you would get stuck in but basically you were just mm -hmm. hopping around the rooms being like, oh shit, I hear it. And you would just stand on a box and it would just like slither past you. <laughs> and it was like still scary, but like also really funny. Um, and then the, we didn't, we were in a discord chat, but uh, you could, there was um, voice chat in the game and it did a gnarly job of doing echo in like the space station. That uh, was super creepy. Um so I highly recommend it. If you're going to play it, just know you can turn off the VHS effects and it will make your eye, your eyes will get better after doing that because we Coward. played for like half an hour with the VHS effects and you just want to die because your eyes hurt so much. Um, Cosmo not super fun. Finally, Atari 50, the um, uh, historical Atari documentary video game put out by Digital Eclipse. Uh, it is, we've talked about it on here before. I believe Ian has played it. You are going through on the timeline of Atari from arcade mm. to today. I think I haven't gotten that far and, uh, you're going to each point of the timeline. Each point goes down and there's like the games released that, that year, uh, significant quotes, significant, significant people, pictures, uh, posters, manuals, all sorts of stuff. Some of the games you can play, you can adjust like the dip switch settings on the arcade machines, change mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. Then Digital Eclipse also has remixed versions of games. Uh, I was playing uh, Lunar Lander for quite a bit uh, because that game rules. And then they have a remixed version of Atari games, which is Asteroids. And then after you finish a round of Asteroids, you do the, you Lunar Land your ship on in lunar lander and then when you land your ship you play battle tanks or something oh, like shit, that that's rad um and it is gnarly and cool uh and is a really great way to uh see history uh they so far they have talked about whether or not drugs were done in the office uh to which one guy was like no no one did drugs in our office and the <laughs> other guy was like yeah we did a shit ton of drugs in our office and the the German vice president down the hall complained about it, so we moved him to another building. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> and we had we had somebody whose job was to to ferry weed between the two offices. Yeah, the inner <laughs> office mail was on Fridays would be heavier because it was things of weed going around <laughs> to different people. <laughs> and uh, he was uh, the guy who came. I think it was the guy who did Yar's Revenge or something. I can't remember what he did. He was like, oh, I went home, got super high. And then, uh, or took a sh some shrooms and then wrote down the entire concept of the game. And it was like, this is gold. And they made the game and it was good. Uh, All right. Which is fair. Yeah, it's a cool game. Me. I feel like we should come up with, there should be a name for that genre. Cause there's a couple of them now where it's, it's like documentary video games where they're giving you interviews or giving you the history. But at the same time, you get that hands-on play experience with the games yeah. they're currently talking about. I um they had their most recent one is the history of uh, Karataka, and I really want to play that game. Uh, it yeah. looks like a lot of fun, so uh, I'll be checking out that. Checking that out next. Um, that is all the games I have been playing. Chris Tober, let's hit you real quick. Sure, <clears throat> mine are actually pretty quick anyway. Um, of, of all things to advocate, a phone game. I'm <gasps> as shocked as you are. Um, <gasps> which one? It's called Theo Town. It's okay. basically Sim City on your phone. It's also on PC. Um, game is just fucking good. 
it's just like Sim Sim City without all the bloat and all the bullshit and all the Maxis. Uh, it's just a solid ass game where you get to make a little city and deal with stupid problems. Mm-hmm. And like when I'm on the on the com- my commute to and from work, hating existence, I'm happy to to optimize the, the transit of a small fake town. At least they they, they can have a better life than me. <laughs> Oh, this game looks awesome. Yeah. Also, yeah. it has a it has a purely offline mode, which is great if you like yep. you know go on a train where you lose internet and go as in and out. Also, if you don't want to be fucking hassled, don't hassle me. I don't want to get hassled. I don't want to get rassled. Don't do it. And I don't want to get tasseled. Uh, this one's for all the the people who love the spooky season. It's called Fears to Fathom. It's a series of games. I actually did not know about it until just now. Um, I, or not just now, like, cause I, I got, I, I got the most recent just one, which now. is called, uh, Iron Bark Lookout. Um, do you, do you guys remember? Good names. The, do you guys remember? I can't remember. Uh, the first one's like, like, uh, Fierce Fathom Home and the other two others. I don't know the names of, uh, do you guys remember when, uh, Firewatch was like revealed and the trailer led it, led you to believe there was going to be a pretty substantial horror element to the game? Yes. Um, I feel like the game and- also does that too. It does that too, but like it does it, I would say differently. The game does it in a more organic, slow way, whereas the trailer I thought was a lot more overt. Like this is gonna be scary. Um, anyway, uh, it is. It fulfills that promise. What if Firewatch <laughs> was a horror game in which there is fuck shit going on out in the woods, and you are in a Firewatch tower, and you are alone in the woods with whatever is out there? In this case, it's a spooky woods cult. Ooh. Uh, is this is this the one where you're taking pictures? You have yes. a camera? Yes. I yes. saw a TikTok for this and it looked terrifying. And you have a little like sound meter that uses a combination of your microphone input if you choose to do that. Otherwise no. it just uses like noise you make in the game. But and noise you make in the game. Um but I feel like have mic having the mic on is like part of the experience. It's intentional. They they want you to go <gasps> and it to pop the thing and you to get seen. Um yeah, super cool. Uh, kind of. Um, what is that like? Somewhat recent Doom, ma- Scythe? Is that what it's called? Um, dusk. Dusk. It looks like dusk. Um, uh, mm-hmm. and like the aesthetic and like the has like that film grain has that like blockiness to it and like the way you sort of move, kind of uh, kind of Doom like not as like floaty but similarly. Mm-hmm. Super cool, great like like scary ambient soundtrack which uses like a mix of like sounds like it could be like real music like almost like almost royalty free and then just kind of like weird creepy noise see these i so i saw someone uh some i watched a streamer play norwood hitchhike which is the second one yeah which you're in a car and that one was where i was like okay this is the kind of horror game i like where there's like a good creepy story going on at the same time versus i had to record some slenderman today for work and that is just finding Uh pages in a house and it's terrifying the entire time where i think i could handle these ones a little bit better yeah Uh, but i'm looking at screenshots of iron bark lookout and it looks dope it's it's kind of like if my house dot wad was like intentionally scarier yeah yeah I can see that. Uh, and the last thing on my list is not a video game. Uh, it's known bastard man Will Crosby informed me that there is a RPG, like a tabletop RPG, for the board game Root, which we are, are fans of. <laughs> I actually really like Root. It's currently my, possibly my favorite board game. I'm, I'm just obsessing over it, actually. Will, there's two more expansions we don't have. One of them uh, is about uh, crow anarchists and a society of mole people um roots great the art style is adorable and everything about it is just honestly really cool it's a very cool concept for an asymmetric board game um there's also a switch version which i need to buy uh, uh, because Will has said it's very good um i found out from will there's an rpg which is basically just a tabletop version of the game or sorry tabletop rpg experience inspired by the game um and Oh boy, have I gone down a fucking rabbit <laughs> hole about this thing. I, in general, I'm not a big fan of Powered by the Apocalypse, which is like the alternative to D&D and Pathfinder. <laughs> um, this looks fucking incredible, and I desperately need to play it. That's it. I'm there. I'm there 100%. Yeah. You can play with me. You know what? Instead of the party, we're just going to do that. 
we're gonna play uh, don't tempt me with a good time <laughs> It's on Amazon. I could have it by Saturday, Will. I can order it right now. <laughs> I could order You know, I saw that, and it was like the one player's book, and then I scrolled down, and it was like, oh, there, here's the three bundled together, like, rule books, and I was like, oh, what if I did that? The, eight, the $80 <laughs> bundle comes with all the rule books, and then, like, dice and little figurines and shit. Oh, I could 3D you, print some figurines, too. Well, you know, you, you know how the ones in the board game are like those little wooden pieces? Yeah. They're like those, but they have the ones for enemies and your little player pieces. Oh my goodness. We should definitely... I know. I, I've been reading Redwall, and um, I was like, oh, what if we were playing this sort of RPG? Subpixel RPG show? Oh my gosh. RPG, RPG yo! We, we, we have a series that's just been dormant for a while, so we could totally, we could totally could. do it. I know. It'd you, be more you, successful you... than yours, probably. <laughs> Famously, uh, Ian Gibson told me it was a terrible idea to start in uh, a D and D show about this time last year when we started Saving Throw, uh, which was a week before D and D Dungeon Dragons had its highest SEO ever in the history of the internet. <laughs> yeah, but but doing a D and D show on? still sucks. <laughs> five hundred to six hundred views a week. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. First yeah. episode I just, has like eight thousand, which I'm very proud of. I think it's one of those things where the market. I don't want to say the market's saturated. The market's hot, but it's because of certain individual things and not yeah. across the oh, whole oh, Overall, the market is hot, but it's shared by a couple of giant yeah, beasts, exactly. which I don't think is necessarily a terrible thing for a small content creator because it gives you, a, I think, not, not a high chance at all, but a, a plausible chance of like it catching on. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is the type of content where if you hook somebody, they're hooked. They'll, also, they'll be there for every episode. I it's just, just it's, like... I kind I, I kind of just want an excuse that like we have to get yeah. together to play, and if there's a release yeah. schedule, you have to get together to play. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. It's just for us, like, because we've we tried to do it in the past. We had a series of one shots, and it was always like it's not hitting enough for us to do the amount of prep work required. Versus, let's do more Mario Maker, let's do more Roblox, etc. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. The uh, Root RPG show will be coming to you very soon. Uh, from the makers, this one's for the furries. From the makers of Case Crackers and other shows we do. What'd you call me? Local chat. <laughs> <laughs> How did we never? We never did that joke as part of that series, but it's right there. <laughs> what Case that's Crackers? The, that's the name. Of course, it's right there. We never, we never explicitly. Made oh, that I joke, assumed though. you knew that. That's why I came up with no. it. No, because we're white. No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are white. Excuse you. Excuse you. <laughs> Excuse you. That's good. That's good. Um, oh boy. Your name is Ian Gibson. <laughs> you have no ground to stand on. I know it's it's very Scottish, <laughs> but I'm I mean, I'm Chris Elliott. Where, where do I get off? He's Will Crosby. Like these are the whitest names you can fucking find. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, there's a very famous Bill. <laughs> <laughs> that is a different last name. We, we he doesn't have the R because, oh, careful! <laughs> no, you're right. Careful. You're right. Sorry, I, careful. I <laughs> okay, we got uh, we got to move on. Ian, talk about well, Mario. The R stick. Yeah. Um. So I've been playing Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Um. It came out last Friday. I kind of had a Sophie's Choice last week where Super Mario Brothers Wonder reviews and Super Mar Spider Man Two reviews hit early last week, and I was like. I should really play one of these, probably both of these at some point. Yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't decide which one. And then I realized I'm going on vacation. So it was the Switch game basically by default. Yeah. So I'm glad I did because there was some downtime during the va the vacation. So I probably played four or five hours this weekend. Which um, for a Mario game, that's a substantial amount. It is. I think I'm about two thirds of the way through. Yeah. I think I'm on world five of six. Um, so I I'm really enjoying it. We did a stream the other day, so I won't talk about it too much. But basically... This is a new 2D Mario, but what what makes it stand out is that it is very playful. They are trying so many different new things. Like one example is they have these series of levels called Search Party, and it's either like one screen or like a very small level. 
but the premise is that there are five big gold coins hidden throughout the level and you have to find them. So it's all shit like you're jumping to try and find a hidden box that then leads you to a different place or here's a bunch of pipes. you got to push one of the pipes, you know, just all sorts of like weird stuff that they're doing with the normal Mario formula. And quite frankly, it just feels like an extension of Super Mario Maker. Um, because if you went online in Super Mario Maker and played some of the community levels, you started seeing some very weird shit. And this game just feels like people who played a lot of that and then said, OK, let's take those ideas. Let's tone them down. Let's make them a little bit easier, a little bit more bite size. And then let's build a whole campaign around it so it's better structured. And that's what this game feels like. Have, have you guys gotten a chance to play it? I haven't played it yet. I, I, I obviously want to. I'm kind of like thrilled to see that a regular Mario game uh, reviewed this well and like people are are loving it. Um, yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't touched it yet. I mean, I'll get around to it. I, that that we said with Super Mario Maker, though, I wonder if that's kind of like a, a Sonic Mania situation where like one person who was just very familiar with the formula made some test shit, sent it off to, in this case, Nintendo and not Sega. And they went, Want to make the game? <laughs> you want to come <laughs> yeah. over here and make well, a lot actually, money? I, I, uh, I don't mean to counter that, but I have some hard facts here, which is Super Mario Brothers 1985 was made by a team of five people 38 years ago. Mm-hmm. Of those five people, four of them worked on Super Mario Brothers Wonder. So wow. this is this is a fucking core fucking Mario game by the people that have been living Mario does since that, the start. And does you that feel base it. five count Miyamoto? Uh, I, the base five counts Miyamoto, but I don't think Miyamoto was part of Wonder. So he's the only one that isn't still going? I, I believe so. And a lot of uh, doesn't count because he was just like a presidential capacity. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So, so it's, it, it definitely feels like it is not just another Mario game. It is them actually trying to push the boundaries and do some weird, crazy shit. And a lot of it works. I think my only, my only complaint, a lot of people are complaining about how easy it is, quote unquote, but... As somebody who's not good at platformers and is not a super diehard Mario fan, it actually feels great because there is difficulty there if you want it, but it's not a difficult experience to get through the game. But I do think my complaint, though, is that they're almost trying too much stuff. So they'll introduce something and it's like, cool. And then they'll iterate on it once and it's like, cool. And then they'll drop it. So I almost Mm. think they're doing too much sampling and not quite diving into certain mechanics enough but it's do you still think that's intentional cool. building for for dlc so they have more space to fuck around no because they, they're doing design. too much stuff i i think i, I it's not it, i don't want to say it's a throw everything at the wall and see what sticks mm-hmm. i think they just came up with too many g- cool fucking ideas and early on they said okay this game is called wonder every level is going to drastically change in some way that gives us the capacity to do every single one of these crazy fucking ideas. I see, you know, and, and I'm okay with that. It's just some of the, some of the things are so cool that I'm like, give me 10 more levels like that. Give me more iterations of that. Well, I feel like that's Um, something you'll get an eventual, an eventual Mario maker, but it's like you have to wait for that. Yeah. 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 So it is really cool. Um, that's super Mario brothers wonder. Um, I was just going to say, uh, for your five people thing, um, that source you link does say, Four out of the five people worked on Mario Wonder. The fifth person may still be at Nintendo, but they just weren't. They were last credited in 2019. They weren't credited on Wonder. So all five of those people are still at Nintendo as of 2019. Just still wild. Yeah, they will. That company will keep you forever as long as you don't do something that makes them fire you forever. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another thing I've been playing is a lot of. We talked about it. Terrible. Jesus. Terrible. We talked we talked about it uh, two weeks ago. The MetaQuest 3 came out and I picked it up on launch day. Um, and then I kind of gave my hardware perspective, which was pretty good. Um, I've been playing Zuckerberg. some VR. Yeah, I've been playing some VR games since then. And um, it's still a pretty good headset. I think the problems I'm having with it is it has a lot of great features it does not successfully deliver continuously on those features. Um, And I'll give you a couple examples. One is hand tracking. It has hand tracking, which is great for sometimes I'm just like, oh, let me throw the headset on and download something or quickly do something. I don't want to have to find the controllers. So it'll track my hands and I can interact with it. But it's literally about 50% of the time 
it does not interact properly. You know, like I pinch my finger, it doesn't count as a button press. So I have to pinch it again, etc. cetera. Um, I'm having problems with linking it to my PC. You're supposed to be able to just USB cord plug into the PC. You're supposed to be able to just USB cord plug into the PC and get it to like basically act like a like a PC headset. Mine disconnects after like 10 minutes and Googling stuff. People are like, well, we don't know. I bubble. It's it's actually it's the same fucking problem I had with the Rift S, which is just a PC headset on a different PC. It's the problem is they have not tightened up the infrastructure and the core OS and the core experience enough that you're still having hiccups and hurdles. What are those two things it? running on the same core OS? Is like a Chromium uh, kind of thing for like multiple browsers, but obviously heads up. Well, in that case, it's not the headset. It's the fucking Oculus PC app. That's a piece mm. of shit. That's that's the core link between them. Um, but that being said, I'm still having some fun in VR games and especially standalone VR games, which is, again, you just put the headset on, you go anywhere, you draw your little boundary. Um, one of them is Pistol Whip, which has been out for a while, but this is see, that's, that's all I've, I've been feeling gifts of that forever. Yeah, yeah. It's basically like it's a linear shooter. It's like a linear on rail shooter, but you're standing there. You're kind of going through an alleyway and there's people popping out and you have to shoot at them and they shoot slow bullets at you. But what, what it does really well is that it's like it's like two to five minute bite size experiences. It's a little bit like super hot in terms of the aesthetics. And then there's just like booming, like techno dance music. So it's like you're really in the mood. And then they're they're constantly making you fucking move which is a little upsetting to me because I would play a five minute level. And then at the end of it, I go, these fuckers just made me exercise. Like I was, I did not want to exercise. What, what in the ring fit adventure is this? It's, it's, it's almost as bad as ring fit because uh, like I'm doing, I'm doing a fuckload of squats. Like I was doing in ring fit because somebody shoots at you and you're like, Oh fuck the bullets coming at my head. And all of a sudden you got a squat or you're going to take a hit. And then you're just like fucking dodging and it's squat or die motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's fun. Uh, I don't play it only because I don't want to exercise, but it's pretty cool. Um, speaking of Sim city, another one I played is called little cities, which is basically a, uh, it's closer to city skylines where you're kind of like drawing streets and then you like zone residential, commercial or industrial. And then you're like, put down power, put down water, et cetera, and put down a police station. But you're in VR. So you're kind of in this like you're 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 in God mode and you can make yourself tiny or make yourself big. And you have like the island around you, like almost like a rug in a way. So you're kind of like walking around and placing stuff. And that was kind of cool. But fuck you. It's time to talk again about the greatest VR game ever made. The only one I want to play, VTOL VR. Chris, have I told you about VTOL VR before? Yes, but go on. It's so fucking good. <laughs> I, just, I just want to tell you a little story about why this game is so fucking good. I've been getting more into multiplayer recently. And uh, that game has first a multiplayer? All, yeah, and it's good. It's very good. Um, yeah, they, they have a two-player helicopter and a two-player jet. So if you really wanted to, you could have somebody be a gunner and you're the pilot or you like it's a trainer jet. So you're both sharing the controls. Anyways, um, the cool thing about the MetaQuest 3, at least, is I can play it wirelessly. So I can go anywhere in my house, wireless connect to the PC and play it. There's a little bit of like distortion you can notice and a little bit of hiccuping, but it's not enough to ruin the experience. So that's honestly how I've been playing it. And um I've been diving into multiplayer because multiplayer is fucking cool because the single player in this game is a little tough because the single player is usually like, hey, there's bad guys in the city. Go take them out. And you're like flying along and all of a sudden you're in range of the city and everybody's fucking looking at you and everybody's firing missiles at you. And it's like, fuck you guys. OK, fuck you. But with multiplayer, there's like 10 other assholes flying around. So they're stealing attention. You know, they're taking out bad guys. You're taking out bad guys. Um, I don't use my voice because I, mm. I just don't want to. But the <laughs> multiplayer is pretty good. Wait, 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 I, I, wait, wait, wait. I, no, I, I get that. I get that. I play a lot of Valorant. And I don't always want to talk to Do you not fuckers. use your voice as in you don't use your actual voice and you speak in a higher pitch <laughs> voice? Or do you just or not perhaps, talk? Perhaps a funny accent. Talk. Hey, hey, guys, we should talk. probably go over there. Hey, it's me, Ian the Gibson. Yeah. Let's a fly the plane. Don't talk. You don't Part want people to recognize because, you. <laughs> Part of it's Holy because... Shit, is that I, Ian from Local Chat? 
<laughs> no, part of it's because I don't know the lingo. So people are flying around and they're like, they're like, they're like X-ray one, two. They're like, they're like, you know, uh, Fox two, Fox two when they're firing like air to air missiles and stuff. Um, but it is cool to be like, Seems like the way it works it. is basically the way it works is basically you have like, like a multiplayer mission usually there's like 10 objectives so it's like you start on a carrier with a bunch of other people and then there's an island and they're like attack this air base you know take out this these uh incoming fighters etc take out the sam site and then as you're going along they'll be like oh this boat just showed up it's a high value target you have 10 minutes to take it out etc so you're flying around there's other people flying around I, I do want to relay one story which is how fucking good this game is so i load into a multiplayer match they're like halfway through the match so we're spawning on a on a carrier. There's like a desert mountain range and they're trying to attack this air base in the middle of this valley. And I noticed that everybody's flying a long distance way around to get to the main objective. And it's because there's one SAM site like in a valley that is pissing people off. And so like instead of them taking it out, it keeps shooting missiles at them. So they're just like ignoring it. And I'm like, fuck you. I'm going to go take that. I'm going to go take it out. So. I take off from the carrier. I start heading to the SAM site. It's like 15, 15 miles away. And there's a mountain range between me and it. And I'm like, okay, I know as soon as I get over this fucking mountain range, it's going to paint me with its radar and it's going to start firing missiles at me. And the game's awesome because it has like warnings and it has distinct warning tones when you're, when you're spotted, when you're being painted, when there's a missile lock on. And I'm like, okay, I know that's what's going to happen. So I fucking climb up this mountain like 100 feet off the the ground i flip over so that i can do kind of a climb dive maneuver to go over the top of the mountain and never crack 200 feet off the ground find fucking fucking map of the earth right and i'm like have the targeting computer with the camera so i'm flying like 100 feet off the deck and i'm like trying to find the guy in my targeting computer i finally like see it and i'm like five nautical miles away now and i'm like flying across this valley floor like these fucking cactus ripping away below me and i'm like okay i can't fire my missile though because i'm too fucking low if i fly the missile it's gonna go in the fucking ground so i'm just like all right i gotta fucking do this so i rip back on the stick immediately get painted by the radar push the stick forward so now i'm at 500 feet launch the missile thankfully it's like an optical fire and forget so you just have to lock it at the start and then it'll be fine on its own it, it, fucker launches a missile at me i like turn hard left full throttle pull it all the way back i'm pulling g's so the game is like blacking out my vision <laughs> and then i turn back around and i'm going and i know the missile's coming at me because i've got alarms fucking blaring at me and I'm just cooking it. And I'm back down at 100 feet, but the missile still locked to me. I'm like, where the fuck is this guy? VR. So I look over my left shoulder. Fucking missile is like 200 yards away. And it's going like like five miles per hour faster than me. So I'm like, I have like 10 fucking seconds until this thing just fucking goes right up my tailpipe. So I just immediately bank right, throw a shitload of chaff flare. So it's like bank right, chaff flare, chaff flare, chaff flare. And then I just like hold my breath and I hear the fucking missile explode. And I hear the tinkle of debris on my cockpit. And I'm good. It ate one of the fucking flares. And I'm like, oh, thank Christ. And I get the fuck out of there. And I look back on my targeting computer and I see the fucking target explode from the missile that I shot before. And I'm like, fuck, yes. Like, that's why that game is so fucking good. It's incredible. VTOL VR, folks. What's that military sim that keeps leaking all the war documents? War Thunder. War How Thunder. is that not in the Ian Gibson game? It I feels like it. it should Predatory. be a Gibson game. Predatory. It's, it, he it's loves really... predatory things. He lives in Florida. No, 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 no. <laughs> this, it is literally that and like World of Tanks and World of Warships. Those fucking games have the worst fucking monetization model I've ever seen. It's basically grind endlessly, 10 different currencies. Even if you throw money in, the grind is still terrible. The gameplay is good. The grind and monetization of those games is terrible. Just play VTOL VR. Yeah, I was trying to think of a way to make fun of that story, but it was actually pretty good. So, <clears throat> yeah, I was just curious. So do you, you, do you? You did lose me at play VR. <laughs> do you ever have to go pee or poop during missions? It like in VR. Yeah, did you go pee while you're flying a jet? No, no. Did you? Pee I, while I will a say jet? though, this is this is we need to talk about this because you guys talked about it last week on local chat. 
you mentioned how you see videos on TikTok, et cetera, and I've seen them as well, of people putting on the quest the quest three and being like, oh, the pass through, which is seeing the outside world through the headset, is so good that I can walk around the house and I can cook dinner while I'm watching YouTube and VR and whatever. Don't fucking do that. I don't fucking know why those people are doing that because I've used the headset. Like there's enough of a microsecond delay and there's enough of a distortion that seeing people like chop carrots while wearing the headset is a fucking nightmare. Like you will lose a fucking finger like that. Yeah. Do you think it records your penis when you pee with it on? Probably. Well, I probably can't but that's, see that's, it. That's, that's the thing is that, is that they're recording through the headset. So if you turn... So if you turn on record in the headset, it's like a 1920 by 1080 video vertical and you look at it and you go, wow, that video is so clear. It looks great. That's not how it looks in real life. The problem is like it does look pixelated. There is distortion. There is a bit of latency. So, yeah, I can walk around. I can find the controller. I can pick it up. I can worst case, like look at my computer monitor through the headset if I have to click something. But. It is nowhere near as clear as people are saying where they're like, I'm going to walk around in public and order stuff and do this and read a book through the headset and cook dinner and cut up vegetables. Don't fucking do that. It's not that it's not that good, folks. Don't get too excited about it. You know. Anyways. Wow. wow. You heard it here first. first fo- no, it's not even worth it. Nice. Uh, those are the games Ian and I and Chris have been playing this week. Shall we hit the news rather quickly, gentlemen? Sure. I don't think I can talk about the first one. Why can't you talk about the first one? I'm not that excited about my job. It could be good. <laughs> is that part of your job? Uh, some of the talent is. <laughs> um, the Fallout TV it. show got a release date. I figured that was noteworthy because we have covered most of the video game TV shows here at Subpixel. Yeah. And I feel like that should continue. Um, so that's coming out. I don't even fucking know. April April 12th, 2024. This is from the Westworld creators, Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy. Damn. Eight days yeah. before Ian's favorite day of the year. Hitler's uh, <laughs> God. Uh, I'm, like, pleasantly optimistic for this one. We've had a pretty re- recent run of good shows that are adapted from blank. Like, One Piece, for yeah. example. I'm just kidding. Right now. Yeah. Um, uh, I definitely think it's going to be a thing of, like, Fallout has a very specific tone that is kind of weird. And if they don't yeah. nail it, and if and if they if they don't nail it, it's gonna come off as either you didn't do it right or it's like forced and cringy as shit. I yeah. I'm afraid and, and they, they do have the teaser trailer, and the teaser trailer had the tone and also did not have the tone. And it was like this, I, I don't think it's gonna be able to you won't be able to tell until you see a full episode. Like you need a full yeah thing to d- tell like have they gotten like the weird ca- ironic americana down or are they actually doing like are they genuinely like communism bad america good Arr. so this is i have two minds of this best case scenario they nail the toe best worst case scenario it's just like westworld season one serious kind of tv show uh they make fallout series yeah. Worst, worst case scenario, it is Joss Whedon's quippy Fallout TV show. Um, I think it'll be the middle one. It'll probably be the middle one. I think it'll be the middle one. Um, I I don't know how many shows I've seen by Christopher Nolan's younger bro- younger brother. I mean, yes. he wrote he wrote Interstellar. Interstellar is great. So he there's, wrote there's Interstellar for that, except for he, a, he wrote the, a couple he, parts of yeah. it. He wrote the first draft and then Christopher came through and made made some changes and added some stuff, but it's mostly the first draft. And okay, then Westworld season it. one's not bad. And then the rest of the show was shit. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I don't even know that. I gave up after season one. I didn't like season I watched one. season two and it wasn't season two was season great two. to a point. Um, it anyways. was fine. The ending of it was very bad. But I think, I Chris, I think you've hit the nail on the head, which is I'm not saying Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, I'm not saying they're bad. I don't think they're capable of this tone based on what they've previously done. I, it's I too, actually it's too uh, self serious previously. I, I honestly wonder if like the problem is not even a tone, like like writing the tone, it's a adapting of the tone. Whereas yeah. like mm-hmm. it it's it's kind of easier to do it in a video game where like we don't really have to talk about the actual past. We can just show it in a cutscene at the beginning of the game and then drop yeah. you into the wasteland and say go. Whereas, like, in a narrative-constructed experience where it's not an open-world video game, 
um, like we have to follow a script that is written by a human. And it's also yeah. like in Fallout games, you can have zero intelligent and walk around intelligence and walk around with like an idiot, and your character talks like an idiot. Yeah, and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Canonically. But you don't see that in a TV show because the main character isn't rolling nothing in their charisma or intelligence. Yeah. But, like but I. I... You could totally do that. There's plenty of shows like Righteous no, Gemstones, no, Vice Principles, about idiots, you know. I'm saying there's I, I just, just like, my concern uh, is, there's a side to that comedy yeah. that they can't fully embrace. I, like, but those yeah, are also, yeah. Ian, those are also set in familiar worlds to us, is a thing. Like, yeah. these kind of shows always have to have an audi audience surrogate to explain to the people who've never played a Fallout game and never are going to play a Fallout game what a Fallout is, so that I mean, they... Which is yeah, a bad way to make these shows, by the way, because you should just make it assuming they know the source material and move on with your fucking day. I feel like the yeah. average person who hasn't played Fallout doesn't know, would just say it is a serious post-apocalyptic video game. Yeah, but it's not It's not that crazy either. It's just like, oh, it's, it's funny post-nuke apocalypse. Right. It's not but... like a crazy concept you have to explain. No, I, no, I just no, mean, no, but... I, think, I think just going back to, to, to Chris's point about tone, like... These people have not delivered on the Fallout tone before. Not that they have to, but the teaser trailer also looked too serious to me. I I think I think the middle option you said will, which is that it's going to be good, but it's not going to be the right tone. I think that's probably what's going to happen here. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't think it's going to be a worse tone. I like like in that scenario, I think it'll be like a just they'll just hit it mostly serious. Um, but I think it'll it, I think it'll be off. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see. I'll still watch it. Uh, that should be fun. Um, hey, yeah. random fact I learned the other day. Did you know Sweet Tooth from Twisted Metal is the name of the car? No. The guy's not called Sweet Tooth. I think in the show they call him Sweet Tooth, but in the yeah, game he's, series, he's, he's the name of the car Samoa is Sweet Joe. Tooth. His name's something is Needles it? or something. Oh, he has it because I'm just wondering if it's because in the first game there were no named characters. They just named the cars and then it, some people were yeah. like, oh. but I just think it's funny that I was like trying to look it up because everyone refers to him as Sweet Tooth. You don't even see the like, um, actually, uh, the car's name is Sweet Tooth. Like, I, I just think that's very interesting. Um, yeah. moving on. Uh, there was an Xbox partner showcase. They showed off Animal Crossing. Uh, like a dragon. Yeah, which I'm very century, excited the, for. we're in the century of the Yakuza franchise, dude. The, like, if you're if you are a lifetime fan of the Yakuza franchise, like like Chaboy, we just keep winning. We just keep collecting, baby. <laughs> I'm so excited. Can I, can I ask really you something great. though? Because I played Yakuza Zero, uh -huh. loved it, yeah, and then incredible. tried to play Yakuza Kiwami, Kiwami. No. and I got halfway through it, but I got burnt out because it was too much more Yakuza. Are you are you getting burned out with how much fucking Yakuza they're releasing now? No, because of the fact that seven and now eight are not regular Yakuza games. They are turn based yeah. Dragon Quest clones um, because, man, real quick, I just Nagoshi, who's the original director now, now no longer with the company uh, of the Yakuza, uh, Yakuza franchise. He's a huge Dragon Quest fan. Dude on his way out, like clocking out of the business for the last time was like, the last one's a Dragon Quest clone. Goodbye. <laughs> and and now they're rolling with it like and so he doesn't, he doesn't he didn't have to make this one he just gets a new dragon quest game tailored to him yeah. i am um, yeah. i still need to play seven i did uh recently... seven is an, an incredible video game experience it's the only video game i ever cried at wow what a fucking we got baby over here <laughs> baby. <laughs> baby i was gonna go the other way i'm like Oh, it's Yakuza that does it? <laughs> yes, yes. Because the final, the, the last like two cutscenes, it's like the Schindler's List effect where if someone is punching you with emotions long enough, eventually you break. Yeah, yeah. That's I think, true. I think, I think I, I teared up at Yakuza Zero. There's some real good bromance stuff in there. It's the writing is good. That's a great example of, of perfect home where it's like the the plot is deadly serious. Yep. Everything else is goofy balls bonanzas. Yeah. Um, uh, I was gonna say I need to play seven. Uh, like a dragon, Ishin, Ishin, mm -hmm. uh, is on Game Pass, so I installed that on the Xbox. That's the one that's like it. the 1800s, right, or something like that. Yeah, Samurais. 
So I, I kind of want to play that one. But honestly, in my heart of hearts, I've been thinking of re, uh, going back and finishing Ghost of Tsushima on the uh, PlayStation 5 version so it'll look crispy and delicious. Uh, that's, actually what, that's actually what I did. I went, I, not not recently, but like some reason I went and played Tsushima on the 5 with the upgrade and everything. Plays like a fucking dream. Looks oh, great. So good. The wind Game's thing. Good. I still love that wind thing. It's so good. Yeah, fantastic. It's video. the best map like feature. Ian ever played done. it for three hours and said it was okay, and then has never played it again. So it's okay. It's okay. It, it actually it takes quite a while to let you play the video game. Is one of my biggest complaints about Sushima. I just I, think I, I played it rolled for around with hours. a giant hat and uh, yeah, super fun. I feel you like get, I you got... get to look so cool in that fucking game. To my credit, I I believe I got to the second island, and that is more than three oh, hours. That's in. a lot. Yeah, you yeah, that's a lot. Fun. Yeah, to your credit. Yeah, we could. I yeah, we could credit you a little bit. And hey, like eight ninety five. I just didn't buy into it that much. As, as some people, yeah, because you're not you don't like things. That's fine. Some of us don't like things. I, it's just like, why would I play that when I can play VTOL VR? Why? Yeah, that's my new my, that's my new metric. Would I rather play this or VTOL VR? Right. I cannot wait. Until this headset gets to you, Will, and you become a Vito VR person as well. Yeah, I'm just I don't gonna know. Become, gonna happen, I'm going to be a VR porn guy. <laughs> Jeez. You, you, ever wish you, could, you ever wish you could be like the porn guy? Like, the porn that seems guy? like, a, that seems like, the, like, just like out and out, like everyone knows it. And then it's just like, you're the porn guy. N- nothing can hurt you anymore. What are you you're looking for? Guy. What do you need? Know. There is, a, yeah, there is exactly. a freeing sense. The purveyor. You know, you go to AVN every year. You know, there's like a freeing sense to Yeah. It. I could see that. Yeah. That could be awesome. Yeah, I would I could be see awesome. that. What do you need? Uh, folks, <laughs> uh, that's going to be it for the news. That's all I care about to talk about. I do have to hit one more socially, socially, contract, contractually, contractually obligated uh, segment here or else Jake will have all of my teeth uh wishlist spotlight this week's wishlist spotlight is crow country on uh on the steam it's on the steam which is where i'm looking at it crow country is a gorgeous uh think final fantasy 7 original art 3d polygonal art but it is a horror game and you are walking around doing stuff it is gorgeous absolutely stunning uh, the year is 1990. Edward Crow has disappeared. The owner of Crow Country. He has not been seen since he unexpectedly shut down his park two years ago. Uh, the silence is broken when a mysterious young woman named Mara Forrest ventures into the heart of the abandoned theme park in order to find him. Um, the Steam page is also gorgeous. It has all the like yeah. art and everything. It's just as someone who's played like 11 hours of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, this is even hitting my nostalgia. Bone. It looks like a perfect marriage of FF7, Silent Hill, and Resident Evil 2 and 3. Yes. And this last line, which will make even Ian's heart sing, features an exploration mode for those of who wish to enjoy the game without being attacked. <laughs> Sorry. I, I thought you said exploitation mode, and I got real excited right there. But it's my mistake. Expiration mode. <laughs> it, uh, the game kills you. You put on the, the headset. I'm back in. And- shoots needles through your eyes the what is it called steins gate whatever the, the anime people are into there's a million of them yeah oh, attack on titan same thing yeah yeah sword art initial art online D. all that shit. that's the one i was thinking of sword art online it's not the first one to do that though you know that right do you guys know what the d I know, stands that, that, that's for that's the one that's been that's been popular a lot is it is it dick damn you know me too well <laughs> folks uh that's gonna be it for the show this week uh, thank you so much for being here. Ian has just finished his large mug from Helen Keller, Georgia. Uh, hope that's doing well for you. Chris, thank you so much for being here. You are wonderful right, and perfect. Today. Where can people find you? Uh, in a darkened alley near you. Uh, save data on YouTube and Twitch. Ding. Nice. Ian Gibson, uh, at Think Gibson on Twitter or in your local truck stop bathroom. Uh, I am Will Crosby at Hunt270. Uh, you can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight to our link tree where you can go to all sorts of beautiful places. Uh, thank you to everyone who checked out the show. Uh, and we will see you all uh, on the upcoming Sunday night. We'll be playing some Spooky Pixel. Last Spooky Pixel, there'll be four of us playing 
uh, enter, exit the back room, something like that. So we'll see you there. Bye. I escape the back rooms.